Aloha and welcome to the Outrigger Waikiki, where we're back with another Surfers in Residence. My name is Marco, and I'll be your host today in for Tammy Moniz. Uh, big mahalo to everyone for the opportunity to sit down today and talk with legendary surf champ, paddler, and all-around pioneer, Laura Bleers. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for joining us I, today. I'm uh, very honored and very happy to be here today in my old stomping ground. Yes, your yes. beach where you learned. I learned to surf at Baby Queens with my family and, you know, graduated to outside Queens. And mm -hmm. uh, in, in those days, we just surfed until we had to come in and maybe get something to eat and go back out. You know, we surfed all day. You and, know? Now, where were you born? You weren't born here. No, I was born in Buffalo, New York, because my oh, dad's wow. a professional wrestler. So... My mom would travel with my dad sometimes because he never wanted the family to be separated. So I was born there, and then we lived in Woodland Hills, California, and then we would come on the Matson lines. My dad would come here, wrestle in Hawaii, bring us kids. We lived in Waikiki, go back, and he, it took him two trips to finally say, we're, we're just going to stay. And, you know, I have pictures of us of Pan American Airlines coming over yeah. with all the laves, Pan Am. And he said, you know, I always thank him. He said, I, I want to raise my family here in Waikiki Beach. And he loved the people. He loved, what can't you not love about the weather? Sure. He came from Manchester, England, where it's all rainy. He was, you know, and lots of things happening in his life. So he said, we're going to, we lived in Waikiki. And you said something about this beach in particular spoke to him. Oh, it spoke to him. And he surfed because he used to surf in Malibu when we were kids because we lived in Woodland Hills. And I don't, he... He just said, um, well, I'm going to raise my kids right here on the beach. And we lived right in Waikiki on the beach in an old Judge Steiner's building. We have pictures. I never gave them any of the pictures. But our balcony went over Kalakaua. And Val Valentine, who had the first surf shop, is went over the ocean. And the surf shop was underneath. And now it sounds amazing, but that at that age, were you homesick or did, were you just in heaven? Right? No, we didn't even like, we had a house and my dad wrestled. The thing is, my dad was wrestling all over Connell, United States. And he said I, he would leave and come back and drive. And sometimes my mom would go and he was like, sometimes I don't, my kids don't see me. And I'd rather just be where I see my kids every day. That's wonderful. Yeah. And now uh, pro as a professional wrestler, that sounds so uh, superhero, you know, like, what was it like watching him? And, and was he a hero or a villain? I know well, that's a big deal. Well, when he was a villain in Madison Square Garden, I started hearing those stories when wow. people were grabbing at him because uh, he was yeah. the bad guy and stuff. And then he ended up turning at some point to be the good guy. He had a manager, a Labrador <laughs> dog that took him in. He wore a monocle. He threw the monocle out into the audience. And, and so he incorporated all of that into the act. He had long, you know, long hair and stuff. Yeah, he had a manager that, you know, would set him up and stuff. And so um, when we came here, um, he was just so happy to be here in, in Honolulu. So how we stayed here is he said, I want to live in Waikiki with my kids, mm -hmm. surf all day, go to school, barefoot, such nice people, just love all around. How can I do it? Well, I'm going to be a promoter and an announcer mm. because wrestling, you have to change the faces. God. And he didn't want to go out and come back. He said, and that's yeah. how we did it. So that's how we made our life. And now we're talking about Lord Talio. Talio Bleers. And so what's the, his, he's English. He's English from Manchester, England. And that's his real name. And his name's Lord. Awesome. The Talio came from him surfing Waikiki, coming down the waves. And here's this British guy. He's a wrestler. And they're going like the, do the dogs. Talio. Oh and it does. Wow. So you walk down the beach. You go anywhere. Talio. 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 That, it, it, it's such a big story. It sounds almost like you when I hear stories of the other Beach Boys on the beach, all these like yes. superhero stories. He must yes. fit right in. Oh, he fit right in, and the Beach Boys raised us. I was just telling Luana, because some of the pictures you see in Outrigger's Lobby of the beginning time, and you see Sandy the dog. I saw Sandy the dog oh, wow. on the boards. You see Richard surfing with that great pose. Mm -hmm. We, My dad's a good friend. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Nappy Napoleon. We got Blackout. We got... Jesse, so many Beach Boys that uh, we would be on the beach all day hanging out, and we wanted to go on the canoe. And my dad said, "Don't bother the Beach Boys. When they do this, that means you can go." Because we would sit and wait when we weren't surfing, mm -hmm. and we went out and we fell in love. We all canoe paddlers too, so it was just this life. I mean, we didn't think anything of about other people's lives. We just this was our life, and we just did it, and we loved it. 
you know, it was just there and it was like awesome. And what was the, like, now you surfed with them at times tandem, is that right? Yeah, I learned how to surf um, tandem. First, my parents push us like you see the kids here at Baby Queens. One parent's inside, one's outside. Mm -hmm. Stand up as a little kid, push. The other one, if you fall off, get back on and then push back out. Then you learn how to paddle and then then you go out and paddle and get the waves yourself. So that's how we started. Then the Beach Boys would take us tandem and stand us up, get up right in front of them and then surf the waves. So you got the, I'll never forget the feeling of them turning and the waves coming behind you and they're in the curl. Not wow. anything real big, but just the feeling, you know, just take us out. And then, and then I did tandem and I think I shared a picture of me in black and white doing the hula hoop. Well, sir. Surfing Waikiki, and it was on the advertisers something in the newspaper. Oh, my goodness. And they said, hey, my dad would just do, like, if you're having fun, do it. Take the hula hoop out. And, and so I'm there doing, like, the hula hoop coming down a wave. Oh, my goodness. And now you're all that your brothers funny. and sisters were, were, were... They all surf. They're all yeah. surfing, too. So were you guys competitive or supportive? Uh, we're supportive of each other, and then some of us like competition more than the others. I was one of them that... I would have to surf, uh, do paddleboard races right out here mm -hmm. against the boys because there wasn't that many girls that wanted to do it. My dad, again, would say, go do it, Laura. Mm -hmm. If you want to have fun, go do it. You know, it, you don't have to. Right. I would surf in heats if they had little things at Baby Queens or at Queens, the boys. Because right. there was girls, but not a lot. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I cried after the boys beat me in a paddleboard <laughs> thing. There's a picture of me that... Um, Clarence Maki, uh, if you ever look him up, he's was a photographer here with many of the Duconomoku pi pictures mm -hmm. are his. And he took pictures, and I was crying on the thing and gave it to my dad because my dad said, you can't cry if you are if you don't win. It's just okay. You know, you do your best. Yeah. Just always do your best, no more or no less. Some of That's those it. boys might have cried years later when you beat them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now you were also, you were very competitive. You were competitive in swimming yeah, and paddling. About me. So was it a struggle to juggle all these different sports or was there one that was, was a clear priority? Well, um, it just was organic. It just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. um, when I was surfing in the competitions all over with um, the Hoes, Michael Ho and the family and the Bensons and the Cows and the Blairs and all of us would go to all these surf competitions all over the islands. We go to Makaha, Haleiwa, you know, all these places to surf. And before they started building, they would have single A, double A, triple A, and then they have, you know, state championships and things were starting to build. There was no pro yet or anything. Right. We would just do it. My dad said, let's go. Do you want to do it again? Like, only if you want to. And we right. we would all be, stand, all the families on the beach and everybody would go out in their heats. And some of us liked it more. I went, my sister wasn't that into it. My brother Jim was, he was a world champion. He, but he, there was a point when he didn't want to do that anymore, you know, right. just because whatever the feeling is, you know, some people are soul surfers and yes. it, it, it's homegrown. It's whatever it is. There's surfers that are top surfers in the world and in Hawaii that don't compete. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Come see, come saw. Some like it, some don't. And what about it spoke to you? It spoke to me. I don't know. I had it like, I think I might've just had it inbred in me that I wanted to compete. My dad was a, a breaststroke swimmer in England, and maybe it was just in my blood. Mm. Um, he didn't get to compete in the Olympics because he went and fought the British Navy for us, mm -hmm. and so he never got to complete it. I, I don't know exactly why I liked it, but I just did, and so I would want to go. And I think just competing was fun. It doesn't didn't mean, like, sometimes you want to win, but, like, it just felt neat to go and do that yeah. and, you know, go out in the heat and stuff. And, you know. It, and was there something that made you so successful at competing across these different sports? Because they're also very different. Yeah, they are. Well, when I went to school, I swam because my dad's a swimmer. My sister's a swimmer. My brother was a swimmer. Mm. Well, we got a scholarship to go to Puno swimming in okay. those days. My dad said, hey, let's see if you can get us, you know. And then I liked to swim. And, you know, now I do the Duke smile because over 10 years ago, someone said, why don't you do the Duke smile? And I started training for it, and and I, I love it. By the time I take the first right shoulder and the second left, going from the second left buoy across, I usually cry across there underwater. <laughs> and I think more it's, crying, more crying. I think it's <laughs> all the mana of all the ancestors and everyone that are are there, and you know, swimming for my brother. I lost my brother, and 
all the other people I know that their ashes are spread anywhere. But for some reason, I know I'm going toward Diamond Head and it, I just have this thing. I say, I'm not going to do it. And the next year mm -hmm. I get this thing and then I, something pushes me and I go on and come in and I, I, I just like doing it. Yeah. I think of Duke swimming because Duke was the first Hawaiian to win a gold medal. Sure. And the Duke kick, and he is an amazing swimmer, mm -hmm. ambassador of Aloha and surfer. His swimming was unbelievable, where he had to train here and go compete against the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. And a natural. A natural. Yeah. Oh, he didn't have anybody doing bungees. We didn't even do bungees when I swam at Puno, and now they do all this, which is great. Mm -hmm. We learn. Humans learn how to get better and better and better. So it's just it's just an amazing thing. And Duke just, Duke Kanemoku is just like, you know, like the, the ambassador of, of love. There's kindness all over the world. And in Hawaii, he, his kindness is aloha. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always remember, I hear, heard someone quote of one of his quotes was, just go out and have fun. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just out there. And I always feel when I go surfing, I've sat at, wonderful day surfing where the waves are big and I'm watching people surf and the, the glee and feeling I yeah. have is awesome. Yeah. You know, and then I go out and get a wave, but I'm just hooting and hollering, you know? Yeah. Tally it makes me feel good. Yeah. yeah. And I say tally all the time. Did you ever have the blessing to actually to meet him, Duke? I, I, I'm not, I, not in my memory. I know my dad did. Sure. But, um, not in my memory. Like my friend said, Hey, I remember when we were surfing and and Duke was out, and I was like, I can't remember it. Right, right. Because it was just like everybody surfing. So uh, he was in the water, but yeah. And you got the spirit through all the other Beach Boys. That, oh yeah, you know. just the Beach Boys. In in the day when we came down, I mean, when my dad would have to fly back, go to California, do some wrestling, and come back, we we literally wore bathing suits under our, our dresses because right. my dad would bring us because we we're staying in Waikiki right over there, and we ran right into the ocean. And I love anytime I can talk with anyone with firsthand experience. So describe their their importance, not just on the beach, but their role in the community in general. Because I think it's it, it, it's hard to find a current equivalent. You mean the beach boys? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, watermen in general. Watermen. Yeah. Well, down at, at the beach, when you have the beach boys that just love the ocean, and they want to share that with anybody who comes. Mm -hmm. So their open hardness to share surfing, the safety, they always taught, taught us safety yeah. in the ocean and how to paddle out around the break, you know, be considerate of others. Somebody takes off, make sure you give them room, kick out, all these things that, that and, and I think the Beach Boys just show so much of what Hawaii is. Mm -hmm. And even when you come down with the generations that we come down, like Dee Dee down here. Dee Dee says hello. Yeah, Dee Dee and his guys. And at, at first when you go, oh, it's not like, but it really is like it was. Because yeah. these are generations of that's what they do. You they, know? they were kind enough to adopt my wife and I, yeah. kind of. And, and it was a true blessing and, a, and, and an honor to get a window into that. Into that. Yeah, you know, they just take you like family. Yeah. You know, it's and like, what they know is just invaluable. Just, uh, you know. It is. The, between currents and when to go and what not and everything. And it is really. Yeah. It is. It's a blessing. And they, they love sharing it. And they, yeah. they love you know, people say, oh, what, there's a lot of people. No, they, they want to share it. Yeah. That's part of what it is from the culture, you know, is come, we feed everybody. Yeah. Everybody come. Yeah. Give, you know. That's it. You know. It's amazing and it's a great life lesson. Yeah. I, I want to get back to some of your okay. accomplishments. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what, which sport did you start competing in? Between paddling and swimming and surfing, what were you, do you remember? Like my the first would be yeah. surfing, surfing, okay. And then the paddle boarding was here in Waikiki because it was part of what happened because we were raised on the beach here. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, oh, let we're gonna go do this today, and we wanted to do it. So I, it would start with surfing, and then paddle boarding, and then when I went to high school, I swam for the Punahou High School. Uh, junior varsity and then right to varsity. Mm -hmm. So that was part of me going to school, and I loved swimming. Sure. Although I must say, we didn't give all. We gave. We thought we were giving all, but they didn't want us to surf, so we wouldn't ruin our stroke mm -hmm. in swimming. And my brother Jim and I still wanted to surf, right, and swim, right. 
And now these days they have surf teams in the high schools and paddling teams. Yeah, that's so, true. Right. But, you know, we didn't have that. They didn't even have water polo for women. I probably would have pl played water polo. Mm. I really respect Yeah, a lot that more sport. opportunity in different sports yeah. and for, for female athletes. And yeah. For it thanks seems to you. like, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I just kind of paved the way when I was just like at the right place at the right time. Like how my story goes mm -hmm. is that I was surfing and surfing in the contests and and surfing in a big waves at that, that time, not like Jaws or anything like that, mm -hmm. going out to sunset, surfing Lani Akea, um, not Waimea, I never went to Waimea, surfing pole sets at Alamoana Bull with Ben Ipa and Rick O'Pee and Michael and, you know, um, Dane K. Aloha and all, all of them. There's so many. They were all uh, Smith, um, just everyone. They were all, we all just surfed together. And it was pretty big, and you know, backsiding Alamoana Bowl is a fast wave. And I just got asked by Fred Hemmings one time, Smirnoff's going to be the first sponsor for professional surfing, starting with men. Mm -hmm. And would you like to surf against the men? And I said, my dad said, do you want to? I go, sure. Okay, only if you want to. And I did. And now, how could just one what? woman? You're the only one you. Fred picked me because he's, I guess he used to see me surfing at Macaw and I wanted to go out. And, and you won the women's felt... Macaw the year before. Yeah. yeah. And he, and I think he felt more like, I don't know why. He just picked me because he saw me surfing a lot and just said, uh, I'm going to pick her. Right. And I said, okay. And the thing, it just kept evolving mm -hmm. and one thing after another, like, okay, the first year you do it, you're just going to be an alternate. Yeah. So then you know how advertising goes. Smirnoff's a sponsor. Yeah. Let's do this whole thing. Here's the first woman invited. Laura's an alternate. 325 yeah. guys at yeah. you, right? And yeah. You saw some ads. So, yeah. so, and then the next year, Laura gets to be in it. One girl's going to be in one of the heats and everything. And it was kind of paving. I think we were going, let's just have the women have their own surf contest. But yeah. this is the way it went. It started that way. It's the history of how it went. Yeah. And so then I surfed at Lania K and I beat one guy. I didn't advance. So they said, Laura beat one guy. I mean, I went on What's My Line. I mean, yeah. TV show. But when you picked know. up that prize money, did were you aware of the fact that you might have just become officially the first pro? Yeah. With well, the, what happened after that, that when I got the prize money, the next year they said, oh, we're going to invite six women. Mm -hmm. They're going to surf Sunset. It's going to be winner take all. And yeah. It'll be the first, in their eyes, it's going to be the first professional surf contest right. for women. But again, it was an um, invitation, mm -hmm. and they invited six of us, and then I ended up winning that. And that would be the first check where I'm standing. Right. I sent um, somebody here from Outrigger the picture of me getting the check. You know how they give the big card yeah, 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 yeah. check? $1,000. Right. That would be like fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> now you did both. Some now some people say that the true equality is is the men and women surfing together, and others say that you don't really have to have them surfing together. That it's equal prize money. That then that gives That's equal opportunity. Yes. So do what are your thoughts? Do, is it so important that it's the men and women women battling together, or even if it's side by side? That's I think it should be side by side, mm -hmm. and it should be equal. Equal prize. Equal money. prize money. Right. So I feel like we've been chasing throughout time. Yeah. Saying, what about what about us? What, yeah. what about us? Come on. And you see all when I was a young kid surfing, my dad talk about wonderful Carissa Moore winning sure. the gold and going to be. My dad used to say to us when we we're home in the living room, Laura, someday surfing, you might be able to surf in the Olympics and go to the right. Olympics. And we go, God, that would be because we watched the Olympics. I love watching all the sports. Mm -hmm. And we say, oh, maybe someday surfing will be in the Olympics. And to see it happen yeah. was unbelievable because my dad used to say that. And then I used to say, Dad, what about canoe paddling? It should be in the Olympics. And he goes, someday that might be in the Olympics. So. But so he's got great vision, not only on these sports getting into the Olympics, but also with, with female athletes yeah. progressing. Yes. But yeah. Really forward, forward he, thinking. He really did have forward thinking on that. Yeah. yeah. And now, when you won, the, when you beat that guy, that must have been such an incredible upset in the community. Yeah. It was really funny because it's like, it was like, okay, well, I just beat one guy in the heat. Maybe you know, I was like, maybe he lost his board. Maybe he lost. His board. <laughs> I go. You're already you making a apology. I, I, I was like, but I did. So that yeah. way, one thing I said I did. You yeah, know, it counts. If somebody asks, you know, um, 
but it was is and so all those things kind of led up then then to that one heat of girls led up to Fred Hemmings them saying let's have a women's circuit right and then I got asked to be in the ABC Wild Wars world of sports. Yes. The superstars. And then I chose that. I went for yeah. three years. Yeah. And I competed in different sports. And my dad went the first year and, and this, it was great. This is interesting because then then there's this whole wave, the quote, second wave of feminism. So you've got Billie Jean King yeah, beating her. Bobby Riggs. And yeah, you've got I you that. beating guys and on network television. And when I was reading about you uh, with the network, Sports events, I guess we'll call yeah, them. Yeah, networks. Yeah, like, were you considering yourself, at this point, you're an entertainer, you're an athlete, you're, are you considering yourself as an activist, representing women at I that point? I would say as an well? athlete, but also activist, because I didn't think about it as much at the time, but mm -hmm. I felt like when I got invited to represent, to go in the women's superstars and represent surfing, uh -huh. and then everything else was, all right. these different athletes, you yeah. know, in different sports. And then surfing got to be, there was swimmers and track, and there was people who rode horses. There was race car drivers, and all these women were, oh. you know, all, from all the sports. And they, for them to ask me to have surfing all, up with all those sports, mm -hmm. which you see now that surfing is yeah. up with all the sports, now, did, which we always thought it should be, but... Now, did that ever remind you of watching your fa your father wrestle? Like the entertainment value of what you were doing athletically. Yeah, it, it was kind of funny too because my dad was an announcer, mm -hmm. so he announced the you know, Pipeline Masters, all the canoe ra a lot of canoe races. Oh, wow. and he was the guy that did the interviews for the wrestlers, so he could live here, right, with his family. So they didn't have to say, "Okay, Lord, you got to go back and do Minneapolis and all of those, and then you can go back to Hawaii. We can't have the same guys." Mm -hmm. So and then my dad got into that year, the gift of gab. And my dad was really good being an announcer. Mm -hmm. And I think I got some of that in my blood because I think it's obvious when I was at the superstars, <laughs> they said, go get Laura Blears over there. She's talking a lot. Yeah. She's not afraid of the microphone. And, you know, I got nervous, but they go, I go, sure, I'll talk. <laughs> right. When I did the rowing or anything like that, they would, you know, mm -hmm. they would ask me and I'd say, OK. And so it's kind of like. Okay. So it was kind of a natural transit because we went not just from surfing and from these these televised sporting events, but also like radio and yeah, I did television radio. game shows. It was, so it was sort of a natural transition. It was a natural chat. And then I got um, uh, San Miguel Beer asked me mm. if I would run a professional contest. San Miguel would sponsor it. And I did. And I called it the Laura Blair's, Laura Blair's Ching Hawaiian Invitational Surfing Classic. I think I have a poster somewhere. <laughs> It was at Sunset Beach, and I invited, I think it was 32 guys. But I said, and I probably shouldn't have said you, you needed to just be from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And now that I think in hindsight, it, you know, Sean Thompson was on the beach, and I was like, Sean's a friend. I should have. But I didn't think at that time. I just called it something else. So they they did radio things with me. Um, wow. Let's talk to Laura. Yeah. Not but bubbles in the beer and all this stuff. So I did radio ads with them, and I did flew to California and did some posters that were in the liquor stores mm -hmm. standing with dark and I light. Saw and beer. Like... I mean, I just went and then they were giving us all this beer and, and my husband, uh, Bon, and uh, uh, we didn't have Dylan yet. That they said, I said, they want us to give us like 10 cases a week. He says, take it, take it. We said, give it to our friend. <laughs> Something like that. We had beer all over the place. And then we took it to the surf meet, put it in big rubbish cans that said, no, no drinking till after the surf meet. Right. And then Playboy came calling. And then Playboy came calling. <laughs> now, so how would, how was that received? Were, was it were people supportive or judgmental? I think most, but a lot of ju I think sometimes I would read judgmental stuff. And, and, I would think, and then a mixed bag. Of and it's kind of one of those things because my dad said, "Well, if you want to do it, do it. It's a nice magazine, but it is nude. It's not. Yeah, it's okay." And then I was like, "Again, a surfer's going to be in it. Yeah, that's cool." And it was you surfing on a board. Yeah, so it was. And there was some modeling in it and stuff yeah. like that. I went over to New York and went in to the building over there and stuff with with Bond and everything. So there was some studio stuff and everything. But the way that happened is We Magazine, which is or owned by Playboy, uh -huh. had a little teeny square thing in the bottom of one of their magazines, We Surfing, three shots in a bikini with clothes on. And I'm running up the beach and it said, what do you say to a naked surfer? Right. And then they asked me after they, this little picture, you know how people work with advertising and stuff, yeah, let's yeah. get that girl. Right, right. You know, and then that, 
they asked me and I said, okay. And so then, then I did that, you know, so it led in from that to that. Mm -hmm. And then, no, there were some, like, some people have said stuff like, um, someone would say not too bad, but you know, oh, she's getting this, um, attention be only because she did Playboy, not oh, river really. surfing. And I was like, okay, whatever. Did you ever have to have that, that difficult conversation with your son? No, I, he has, I have. <laughs> no. Dad, but, if you're watching, she didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, they went to one thing that I think is super cool. Tell me about the Super Sisters trading cards. I thought that was so awesome. I got that. In fact, um, they just contacted me for the Super Sisters trading cards, and I have it. What a cool idea. And that was really neat. And now I'm seeing they're kind of bringing their... I haven't contacted them, but I bought a shirt from them or yeah. they sent me a shirt. Super Sisters, I thought that was super neat. For anyone who's not familiar, I thought it was so interesting that I guess the people who started the who started the trading, it was trading cards because the person's daughter said, oh, you know, there's baseball cards and football cards, but why aren't there any calls, cards for women? Right. So I looked at the list and, and it was amazing. Race, like you were saying, race car drivers, skiers, yeah. doctors, lawyers, uh, politicians. And so trading... Yeah, of, of famous and powerful women. Yeah, I, th I, I thought it was a, a more amazing than I thought at the time when now recently have been going back to go brilliant. Yeah, really, really is brilliant. really, again, more forward, forward thinking. Um, and now you're still competing to this day as we, we're going to be here with uh, Duke's Ocean Fresco County. Yeah. So any little secret, any uh, daily routines, diet, life hacks? I mean, I was one still com competing for decades. For myself, I always try to keep the training going. Mm -hmm. When I do the Duke smile. What might that consist of? I, it, uh, four to five days a week going to the pool and alternating the ocean swimming just a little over a mile and okay. sometimes to the clock because really? I'm competitive. So I want to not Girl. be like just swimming. Yeah. And so I have my goggles and my cap and I can just go swim. And the way it all started too was my mom and dad, I thank them so much for everything that have passed. Their ashes are in Makaha where we lived. Oh, That's where we had a house and we lived there. And my dad called it God's country and Buffalo Kaolan and the family, which started here in Waikiki mm -hmm. with my dad down there. Haleauau is what it was called. Um, they moved to Macaw and so did my dad get an old Quonset head. We'd go surfing. My dad would put us in the van and we'd all go surfing Macaw, sometimes in North Shore, but we loved Macaw. Mm -hmm. We just loved it. Buffalo, them, Buff and Momi and their family were so, mm -hmm. so kind to us. So what happened was my when my dad and mom had to leave the house and my mom was with my brother Clinton who is a very good surfer also as well with my sister um he was surf pipeline with Jerry Lopez all the time he was like but he was with a soul surfer mm -hmm. like I, you know he, he won competitions but this wasn't his cup was of tea thing. but he's really really good took care of my mom my dad was at um wonderful Kuakini and I said I can't paddle anymore I want to go live on Maui come over and see my parents go back to work come back and forth I couldn't figure out moving here and stuff. Grabbed the goggles and a mask and said, what I can do in between that is train. Mm -hmm. and that's when the Duke smile came into play. So if you train for that every year, you're going to be working out. Yeah. And then that's how it, it, and my dad being a swimmer. So I, I just love, you know, I used to write swim for Jim, my brother, mm -hmm. who, who had passed. He was a lifeguard and world champion, as we said, yeah. was, you know, I'm going to keep doing that because it keeps me going. So I got to train hard for swimming and surfing. You got the, kind of the sea legs and you kind of mess up at the beginning. And yeah. I could practice more at that or surf, not really practice. Right. But surfing, I don't really practice. I just like to go surf. And that's your practice, you know. And what's the fuel? What's What do you lean on for food? What What are your go-tos on, on what you're eating? when? You're oh, eating? by eating, I'm always a lot of vegetables. I okay. eat brown rice, vegetables. Um, I like to eat more healthy, more live. Um, so I do eat um, like soy products and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not strict. I'm I'm a flexitarian. Flex so. so moderation and heavy yeah, on the veggies. But mostly veggies and brown rice and fruit, fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. I like stuff fresh, so that's why my refrigerator doesn't have that much stuff in it. Right. It's fresh, and I got to go buy more fresh. Exactly. You know. Yeah, we so. love the farmers markets here in Hawaii. I mean, you've got it twelve oh. years, twelve months a year. The it's, most amazing produce you'll ever see. In yeah, Hawaii. I go to the farmers market on Maui like. Twice a week, and mm -hmm. I just love going. I love papayas and 
Just my dad ate watercress a lot, so I love watercress. I was waiting to hear some <laughs> Italian cuisine. Oh, but Tell me about mom. Tell me I didn't talk about mom at all. My mom, she surfed. Waikiki. Okay. She is a great surfer. She um, you must have been a strong female. She very strong. She also worked at an old gym called Timmy's Gym here. Mm -hmm. She actually trained a, a farmer Miss Hawaii. Oh, that's before it. I was aerobic instructor too. I love teaching aerobics. To this day, I teach classes in a hotel, aqua size, exercising okay. in water. Mm -hmm. I teach a stretch class. I've always done that. Yoga no, too, right? Hotels. Yeah, well, mine is yoga and Pilates put together. Yoga Lotties. Yoga Lotties. Yeah, that's what they, you know, they got goat yoga and they got surfing great. yoga. And, but yeah. That's true. Yeah, I see yeah. people doing yoga on, on paddle boards. Paddle right? boards and stuff. So right. every time you open up the TV or a book, they're what? They're yeah. doing, the, they make another name for another grapes. Kudos to you can have another thing that you like to do. Yeah. And Jerry Lopez was famous for, for, for what? Did yoga. you ever got to do a yoga class with him? No, I haven't. Uh -oh. But I remember <laughs> being in the Huntington at this uh, state, the uh, Huntington Surfing Championships. I think I ended up getting third that year. I think my dad is in one of the big surfing, a uh, big book that's a, a coffee table book, tying Jerry Lopez's uh, jersey back for him because we would go to the Huntington Surf Championships. Mm. And my dad would take us and he would support all the surfers. We're all really young. And yo uh, Reno Abalero and Jerry used to do yoga under the by the pier. Mm -hmm. They did yoga before they went surfing, which so smart for the flexibility. So pretty makes sense to me. And we I didn't think of it then, but when I think of it now, I go, "You guys are ahead of your time." Yeah. Any advice Literally. that for for up and coming surfers or athletes? Actually, you're such a cross platform athlete. Any, any advice in general for the next generation? I think to do surfing as much as you can or what, whatever your sport is, but be flexible and be strong and, and have both of them. Mm -hmm. Take the time to have both, not just the strength, because if you're flexible, that'll help you from injuries. And think about the really? times when you lose your balance, because when I teach exercise class, we teach balance. You know, I have the people in the water, so it's a little bit easier, but we do balance things where we move the waters, balance on one leg, stick leg out, and then... You have to use your core stabilization to be able to do that in the water, but you do that on land. Mm -hmm. I think you need to do all of that because I'm seeing, when I see some of the clips of the pro surfers now and stuff, they're doing, they have a trainer that's yeah. training, giving them training with weights and yeah. agility and all that. We we just surfed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some of the dietary stuff is yeah. so scientific. You yes, know, they are. You like getting yeah. into it. And now, what about your head game? Because for, com for to do anything competitively, there's got to be a, a mental edge as well, I would think. Yeah, there is. I think sp spending that time to even try to get into your own mind of meditation a little bit is really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, just quiet time. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of find more of, like for surfing, though, like going surfing, catch a wave and you're sitting on top of the world. I think when you go out, and you get out in the water and you catch a wave, you're not like kind of meditative. You're yeah. not thinking of anything else. It's like nothing that's going on in, in your life at that moment, mm -hmm. you know? It's pretty hard to think of anything else while you're dropping in. Yeah, <laughs> right. And when you're surfing, you're not thinking about like, I have to go to school tomorrow or right. I, what about my car or nothing, you're surfing. And everyone has such a personal relationship to the water. I heard, heard in one of your interviews you were talking about poetry and what's some of the headspace that when you're when you're in the water. Um, oh yeah, I did. I yeah. I do recite poetry because my dad, he used to always say, "How come you guys don't do poetry in school so much?" Because in England, poetry. Oh, with the okay. So he would recite different poems while we were at home. So I do sometimes recite a couple that I uh, remembered. Mm -hmm. Um, while well, my dad was at Kulakini because he would, I would say, dad, say the bluebird of happiness or, and he would say it, you know, and, uh, he, we, he would quote, you know, lots of different quotes and stuff. Mostly that one that people always say, like, no matter how many times you get knocked down, you're going to get back up. Mm -hmm. You just always get back up. Right. There's no count. Just get back up. So this is beyond even poetry. This is mo yeah, directly motivational. Motivation. Yeah. But then, yeah, he did like, um, the poetry, though, he would say different ones, like he, you know, all different kinds of stuff that he had in school. He would he would quote. That's such a beautiful connection because that's one thing that I, I've been hearing more <laughs> about is how um, about surfing. It obviously a sport, but how about that an art an art form as yeah. well? Yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting collaboration there. Sure. 
and some people have have music associations yeah. with it. Do you have any any? Uh... I mostly not don't have music associations. Right. When I when I'm when I'm swimming, I I usually say the Lord's prayer at the beginning when I'm training. Um, for some reason, underwater and hold my breath. It's mm-hmm. been happening lately. And then when I swim, and then sometimes I'll I'll do a cha- uh, sort of like a chant, you know, my own like oh how many did it go, reach rip, relax recovery reach you know i keep yeah. going over with that like a kind of a chant mm-hmm. or sometimes i do the duke's creed when i'm swimming when i memorized it because wow. i would say it i say it in front of my the restaurant i work at chemos that burnt down but yes i still say chemo is where i work yes. um you know. and you will for a long we're obviously all of our hearts and prayers yeah, are going out i know to maui and the, i know you of all the things that that are lost life and history yeah. um you know, chemos is something that hopefully they can rebuild. Yes, I think they will. And, and my just heart goes out to, uh, you just get these moments where I was telling somebody in the lobby that I met because they kind of asked me. And I said, you know, um, you usually are having a cup of coffee and watching a disaster like that somewhere else and go, oh, no. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like where you live. And you didn't know what was happening for a while. And just the tragedy of life. And it was one of those things like we talked about coming today and I was, my son Dylan said, mom, we'll just write them. And then, and then I started to think, overthink it. He goes, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Yeah. You got to be strong for everybody. You have to, we have to live our lives and we have to do better and help yeah. each other, being love to everyone, being peace to everyone. And it's okay. And I said, well, that's kind of why I said, hey, I'm still here. You know, yeah. I didn't want to be disrespectful. And I don't feel like it's disrespectful right. at all because, you know, we're here and we can we can share our love and compassion and, and prayers for everyone. And participating in, in Duke yeah. Ocean Fest is yeah. it can can help draw a lot yeah. of attention. It does. Uh, there's a lot of good charities and whatnot that yeah. has a chance to promote. I know that exactly. the, the TS restaurants, I know that your son works for them and yeah. you worked for them and they yeah. have. Let's see, the legacy of Aloha is, is and, and Outrigger has Outrigger Cares. Cares and, yeah, it's a, a, the, the outreach of, of help yeah. and, and love and caring and Aloha is just insane. Yeah. I mean, I went across the street to go get to Macy's to get a couple things because I in my packing, and I didn't lose my home, I just had to get over here. I left everything and took the different stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm going to walk over there. And this lady... Josie over there, she's walked over that works there and just told the lady, buy what she wants and use my card from her Macy's. Yeah. And and then just gave me a big hug. And I just said, chicken skin. Yeah. I, I was like, wow. And then I went and found her again and gave her a big hug. And I go, thank you. I mean, I, I'm amazing, you know? Yeah. I, the, I mean, just, just people getting in touch with you is amazing. Yeah. So many people have sent how's Laura doing? And then we're all trying to find out how everyone else is doing. Yeah. The chain of love, yeah. the chain of a law just keeps on, you know, going. It, it's impressive to see. And it's something that it seems Hawaiians are particularly good at. And I'm sure yeah. it's from being on the small island yeah. and being left to your own to, to support each other. Because they're always about taking care, you know? Yeah. A law is about not choosing who you're going to share a law to. It's everyone. Yeah. You don't pick and choose. Right. Aloha, everyone. And, and this is a time when you really have to take that up a notch because yeah. even if we're at a Starbucks here in Oahu, you don't know who you're speaking to and if they just lost everything right. uh, uh, over in Maui. So to, for yeah. locals, but for visitors who are who are visiting, to really keep that in mind that, that uh, everybody is feeling this terrible tragedy in different ways. Absolutely. And yeah. it's always like I'm trying to say like the next day we got to try to be positive Try not to be negative. Try to yeah. be positive. Do positive to positive to positive. You know, whether you're saying it to someone or feeling it, you yeah. can be love. Be love can travel so far. Mm-hmm. Beams, you know. So wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, well, you know, we have to just honor uh, those lost. Yeah. But over time, I, I, it's obvious that that town will rebuild. Yeah, we will. The Mua Imua Lahaina, Imua forward yes one thing to to remind everyone of is unfortunately in times like this there are fraudsters who come out to yeah. just make sure that you 
you know, oh. that you know you're giving to, and obviously the TS restaurants and the Outer yeah. and very other. Yeah. There are some very wonderful, legitimate charities, and we've been giving my wife went to the Maui Food Bank. Yeah, um, you got to do the ones that yeah. you know because we've already heard of someone who said, "Hey, um, my husband doesn't have a Vemno," and somebody's saying, "Give to yeah," because he's fam- he's a friend of a lot of people, and I was like, yeah. "Oh my God, something really did happen that bad," you know. So well, I imagine be there'll be a, a lot of love this weekend uh, uh, with with Ocean Fest. What are you competing in? I'm competing in the Legend Surfing. Okay. My team that's from Maui, we'll see what happens because I told di- my son I don't have to surf in it. I've surfed in it so many years. Yeah. So don't worry about it. And then I'm I'm in the Duke's uh, Ocean Mile next Saturday, the 26th, right here at the beach. Right on. And I and I I. I'm going to have to just have Boshido within my core and and ask for the strength because my s- swimming has been broken up, but mm-hmm. I still feel like I can do it. And it just rings in my head. My dad would say, long and hard, breathe. You yeah. can do it. Reach, rip, relax, recovery. And that's what I'll do. <laughs> that, that's a good, that's a winning mantra right there. I'm putting my money on you if there's a betting pool on this. I don't know. Wow. Well, thank you for for, co- you. for coming down. This has really been amazing. And, and I'm uh, so glad to meet you. It's an honor uh, just to be with your crew, oh, with man. Outrigger, with Luana, and just thank you. Thank you for coming down, and good luck in crushing your competition you. next week. I'll do my uh, best. Thanks to Laura Bleers for, for joining us, and thank you uh, for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this conversation and you want to see more, make sure you like and subscribe and share with friends. Mahalo for watching and aloha.